Don't want to look too desperate. Okay, have no clients then. Oh, I've talked about it enough. You haven't. I guarantee you haven't talked about it enough. We built up the, the, the brand equity. We built up the fact that the value would be perceived higher than the price. So many coaches just talk about their clients and they just talk about how great they are and don't actually involve the reader in anything. If you want this, here's how I can help you. Here's how to do it. Cool. In this video, we are going to tell you how to influence people with your calls to actions. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're going to talk about calls to action and why so many coaches do this really, really badly. And we're going to go through what to do instead and what to think about when it comes to doing a call to action um, within your posts. So if you like this free content on YouTube, you're going to love the content that we have inside our members group. Uh, the link is below. It's not nine pounds, no contract. Every single week, you're going to be getting two videos, um, two live videos where you can come, turn up, watch the presentations, ask questions on all different topics as well. One with us, one with our coaches uh, and all the back catalogue of all the previous videos are in there. It's £99 and it is a fucking steal. Yes, it is. So we're going to talk about course to action because it's a huge, huge That was part a call to action. Of, that was a call to action. They're a huge, huge part of social media marketing that coaches just get completely wrong and the most common one that i see from coaches all the time is they do a really long post about say protein and then at the bottom of it they just put um coaching space is available dm me for more info and they think that people are going to come flooding to them because they've put that at the bottom of their post and they put it on every post and wonder why people aren't reaching out for coaching um and it's because that's a pile of wank basically so we're going to talk a little bit about how to kind of make your cta's niche specific to the content you're talking about different ways you can do them they don't have to just be selling something um but ultimately they're really really important to do to drive people to the thing you want them to do next after watching a video reading a post etc etc people usually put those things at the end um of their copy because it's hidden i think it stems from people not wanting to sell either yeah. because they feel salesy or alternatively they're afraid of nobody signing up they're afraid of really putting themselves out there and getting nothing back because they don't want the rejection so on some subconscious level or even conscious level they're kind of doing the minimum and they know that if they do that that it it, fe it feels less as though they've put themselves out there so if they don't get anybody reply it's because they haven't done it i think you putting dm me for coaching at the end of your posts will feel different if you put dm me for coaching on your stories and nobody signed up and nobody inquired right i think you get less less rejection feeling if it's just in the copy so that's why people will do it is because they know it's not really going to get seen and it's just an arbitrary throwaway thing at the end of your caption but it, it it's not good enough what i want to do is i want to put people's mind at ease by going selling your service if it's a good enough service isn't sleazy it's the right thing to do because somebody else will be selling to them or cold dming them or trying to manipulate them onto a call or whatever right doing a sales script if you believe that you're the best coach for that client, it's your job to sell to them because otherwise they're going to sign up with somebody else and they might get ripped off or pay over the odds or end up with a fucking eating disorder or get no results or whatever, right? So you have to sell to them. So it's not salesy by just saying you have some spaces or call to action in for something else, call to action in for a lead magnet or giving them something for free, which we can talk about later on. But it's not salesy. But if you're doing it, do it do it right. So what would the right the right way be? Well, the CTAs need to be planned into the content, so it should be part of the the piece of content that you're posting. So for example, if you post a testimonial of a of a client. You need to describe the situation they found themselves in and you need to then relate it to the person reading it. And it could be like maybe you felt something similar. Again, you describe the situation that the person reading it is going to find themselves as well as the person who's in the photo, in, in, in the transformation picture, for example, right? You then need to weave that CTA in near the start of the, the caption as well as near the end of it, but it needs to be relevant and specific to what you've talked about. I've talked about this but in the members group, which you can join for 99 pounds, links below. Um, talked about there's different ways of doing this. You can future pace. You can talk about the future, what the future looks like, how this person is where this person wants to be. 
and you can sort of say, this could be you in three months' time if you message me now, if you do this now. And it's referring to it constantly throughout the text. So rather than just putting one line, DM me for, in, for, for information about this, why are you not saying message me, say, three times within the caption? It could be near the top. You could talk about the, per, the pain points someone's going through. So they felt, um, they felt awful in their clothes. They wouldn't take the top off at the beach. If this sounds like you, you're the kind of person who needs to send me a message after reading this. Again, nothing hugely kind of salesy about it. It's just telling them what to do next, right? Then you can go into it and go, well, Mike went through this process and he now feels amazing. Now feels great this top off. All because he sent me that message that you're going to send me in a minute. And then you go into the next bit and you're going to have further down and you go, right, this is what coaching can do for you. This is how you need to apply. This is what you need to do. Now you need to DM me this word now because there's only limited spaces and I'm taking on this many people before my application's closed, blah, 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 whatever. But you can see how through that piece of caption or through that piece of copy, there is three opportunities for people to go, oh, that's what I need to do. I know what I need to do to get that sort of result. And it's that sort of stuff that people just aren't doing. They're not setting it up in a way whereby with a call to action, you need to set it up. You need to think about it and dare I say it, edit and draft and redraft and re-edit captions when it comes to course to action. Whereas what I see from a lot of coaches, is they don't put any effort into the caption. They just put that at the bottom. Oh, Mike's done great. Look how great Mike is. Mike looks amazing. Mike's great. If you want to be like Mike, DM me this word. Yeah. I don't care about Mike. I care about myself. I care about what you can do for me, not Mike. And so many coaches just talk about their clients and they just talk about how great they are and don't actually involve the reader in anything. And that's why their CTAs fall on their arse because you've not made it relevant to the person reading it. You've only made it relevant to the person who's on the picture and you made it all about them. And people don't give a fuck about Mike in the photo. They just don't care. I'll give you two examples um, and three more if you need them. Um, I'll give you I'll give you two examples of what Dan just said in terms of like the the pain points uh, and like the future pacing style stuff and I'll do it relative to 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 coaches. Now the caveat is is that you need to know your niche, um, mm -hmm. so you need to know your pain points. So if I said something like this, um, most coaches don't know their niche. They think it's um, gender, age, profession, but in actual case, it's not even scratching the surface. And because they don't know the niche, they're unable to make consistent content that they enjoy creating. And because of that, they get nothing back from it. So their lead generation is not where they want it to be. Luckily, we did our last video on this in the members group. So if you want access to that, hit the link in my bio and find out all the details. That would be an example of some pain points that are relevant to somebody else, that somebody reading it, if they don't know the niche, if they're unable to make consistent content, they're not getting the lead generation that they need. I've hit on a few pain points there it piques somebody's interest with the DM of clearly what, uh, with the, sorry, the um, instruction, the CTA of exactly clearly what to do. The other way that you could do it is, imagine in three months time when you sat there creating consistent content, you're getting a steady flow of lead generation and you're at a client number that you never thought was possible three months ago. Well, that was like Steve who joined the members group three months ago. Here's the link, just like hit the, hit the link in my bio, just like Steve did. Mm -hmm. That's another way of doing it so imagine this imagine you are answer all pain points back it up with social proof just like steve C clear cta of where to go i could probably do those ctas on my stories today and pull some people into the members group i, I could probably do those two exact ones and pull people into the members group now that's only going to happen. That's not to say that you can do that and pull people straight in. That's only going to happen based off of what we've just done for the last few years. We've built up goodwill with our audience. We've built up trust. We've built up likability. We've built up social proof. We've built up equity and value to what we're saying. So when we do a CTA like that, we probably will pull people through the door. You're going to have to build all of those same things up that we have done so that when you run a CTA, that there should be people chomping at the bit to learn from you. I say this a lot to some of our clients who run group coaching, right? And I'm like, okay, so they've got 4,000 followers and you've got six people on your group coaching. And I go, only six people want your thing at £99 or whatever price it is. Only six people. I said, if we launch something at £99, we'd get 100 people on it. Like, like that. If we had a, a six-week group coaching for everything that we do for the first six weeks with our current clients for £99, people will get it. 100 people will get it. Why? Because we built up the, the, the brand equity. We built up the fact that the value would be perceived higher than the price because of everything that we've done. And then we've learned how to structure the calls to actions to provide enough um, pain points, enough future pacing to allow that to happen. Unfortunately, coaches post relatively infrequently they put dm me for coaching at the end of each uh, at the end of each post and that's what they're expecting to grow on their social media with mm -hmm. it's not going to happen 
Instead, what you do is, like us, you give, you give, you give, you give. And when you ask, make sure that the ask is fucking decent. Make sure that the ask, CTA, is decent. Make sure it's well-structured, it's thought out, it's planned, that there's multiple done in a, in a maybe a concentrated period of time so that for three or four days we push the members group or we push sign-ups for one-to-one, that we push it like that. And then you go back to give, 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 give. And you build back up that brand equity and the, the fact that you're, you're giving goodwill and you're not just sell, 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 sell. That's how you do it. So within that, like Mike just said there, there's, there's that three to four day concentrated period. And the reason you do that is to make sure that people have seen it because people don't see it. You think, oh, I've talked about it enough. You haven't. I guarantee you haven't talked about it enough when it comes to pushing that side of stuff. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing that Mike just said there about give, 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 he doesn't mean never CTA for three weeks. It might just be that you do one or two within some of the posts. They're still there. They're still kind of talk about your clients and the pain points they go through, but it's not really, really pushy, right? But then those three to four days when you really do push, you really do go for it. But the point I wanted to make as well within all of this is that each CTA needs to be what I would term like a hard CTA. It needs to be relevant and useful because people don't notice it. You think that people will see it. You think that they might read it, but they don't. And there's this expectation with coaches that when they put a CT out, people are going to reach out there and then based on that one CTA, they're going to drop everything. Oh, Mike, they're at work. I'm going to drop everything they're doing. I must get back to Mike. It was an incredible CTA. They're not. If it resonated with them, I'm going to mess that guy later. So they need to see another post the next day. Oh, yeah, I need to remember to, to do that. Oh, I need to remember to do that. How many times do you guys just get a random inquiry out of nowhere after doing CTAs all week, randomly at the weekend? Oh, yeah, that was, I must remember to do that. Yeah, that's why they do it then because they're more relaxed, they're in a place where they can do it. They may not reach out there and then on that post. That's perfectly normal and fine, which is why you need to do CTAs regularly. You can't just do it one-off once a month, like Mike said there, three to four days, because I know what you guys might be watching. Like, oh, I only do it then three or four days, and the rest of the month I'll leave it. No, 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 no. As a ratio, you're just more skewed towards giving. It doesn't mean that your CTAs go to zero. It means that the 80% give, 20% CTA, whereas those three to four days, you might go 80% CTA, 20% give. It's the ratios and it's like the dimmer switch. It's not an yeah. on-off switch, it's a dimmer switch, right? And the coaches that are getting clients that are doing this the best are CTAing regularly. They're doing those three to four days of really pushing it. They've also got an email list. They've also used their Instagram stories. They also don't just rely on Instagram posts. So they can CTA on various platforms at various times and they can make sure that they can track this stuff to go, right, well, I'm doing this many CTAs a week. So when Mike says that there, like we still get clients regularly doing three CTAs a week, Right. And I would class that as a week where they're doing a low number of CTAs. Like I just said, give him majority of the time. Because when yeah. you do three CTAs, right, if you're posting twice a day on average, that means out of that, that means that 11 posts are going to be giving posts and three are going to be CTAs, let's just say. That doesn't include stories. So two of them may be on feed and one of them may be on stories. You add the stories into the mix and go, well, you might post 100 stories over a week. It's not that much, really, in the grand scheme of things. But people look at three CTAs a week. I don't even do that in a month. You know, that's your problem. That is your problem, is that the numbers that you're doing are just not good enough. They're rookie numbers. Yeah. You can pump up. those numbers up. Um, but it needs to be done in the right way. And, and, and like Mike said at the start, if you're not selling to them, the people selling Herbalife, the Slimming Wilders, the Bro Bodybuilders, the Meal Plan people, they're selling to them all the fucking time. Mm. So don't sit there moaning that your clients or potential clients are going to do that or they're being bombarded with that when you're not providing the alternative and doing a good enough job of doing the CTAs. Yeah. So, and and that's only CTAs for coaching as well, by the way. Yeah. So when we talk about giving, you can also CTA for your lead magnet, which you should have multiple of. And that is a give because it's free. Because it's give. Yeah. So you should be called to action for that because you should be moving somebody from follower to on my email list. And then you can CTA to them another time, like Dan said, via email that the coaching space is available or whatever it is. So the concentrated period that's where you are slightly more aggressive. So Dan terms it as like a, a hard CTA. So that would be things like you might pick up the frequency on your stories. You might dig a little deeper. You might make specific posts specifically about it. Mm -hmm. Objection handling. What's the cost of coaching? What's involved with coaching? Mm -hmm. And be specific. I would say you should pretty much 80, 90%, if not all the time, be having some kind of CTA for coaching on your transformations. Mm -hmm. And that's not a DM me for coaching like Steve like or Dave or Mike, I think you said Mike. That's a real structured pain point. That's a real 
clear problem solve. It's a small mention of the client about what they did. And it's a direct CTA that links towards the pain points and the solutions that they're, they're after. So each one of those, so if you're posting one of those per week, if you're posting one transformation, which it should be a week, then that should specifically be a well thought out call to action, not a DM me for coaching at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It should it should be on there. And then one or two on your stories where you're sat down at check-ins and you're showing your training programming. Dan hadn't progressed his back squat for the last three years before training with me. On his last training block, he hit a PB of 180 kilos. This one, we're going for 200. If you're like Dan and like to progress your back squat and get big legs, drop me a message, drop me a reply to this story. Like, that's a, a CTA. When you start training program, when you start writing um, your initial programs for new clients, when you're welcoming new people to the team and when you're showing their results, when you're sat doing check-ins and you're sat and there's something that's funny come up in a check-in or you're showing weight loss, there's so many opportunities to do a call to action alongside the stuff that you're just or should be doing on a week on a day to day basis within your actual job, you can call, use it and tie it into a call to action. So if you do two on your stories and one on your feed per week, it's actually not a lot. And then when you're going for a bit more of a concentrated push, you ramp it up and you're doing maybe three or four on your feed and maybe five, six for that week on your stories, and you go for a bit of a push. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? Don't want to look too desperate. Okay, have no clients then. And actually, ironically, be desperate. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is that the, the coaches that are doing that aren't desperate because they're getting people to reach out and the people sign up. And, and and that's the thing that people need to get their head around is that the people that are doing that, you might think it's desperate, but that's only because your perception of how that's done is 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 desperate. It's not desperate. It's telling people how to sign up with your business. You don't see Coca-Cola going, oh, do you know what, guys? Let's not advertise anymore because do you know what I mean? I'm sure people will find it if they want it. They don't, do they? They sell more. They do more advertising. They sponsor more things, right? They don't stop. I think it's exactly the same with this, is you need to be putting yourself out there regularly. Otherwise, you are going to carry on having no clients, having that view of CTAs as being desperate and salesy, when in actual fact, it's not. It's just the reality of running a business. So if you can't face that and you don't like the thought of that, again, maybe this isn't for you. I CTA'd right at the very beginning uh, about the members group. Did it come across as sleazy? Do you hate me? Am I bothered that the, the however many people watch this, let's just say 300 people watch this, am I bothered that 300 people don't join the members group? No. Am I bothered if no, none? No, not really. Did I do it anyway? Yeah, I did it anyway. Are you still watching it now? Well, yeah, if you're listening to these words, by definition, you're still watching it now. Mm-hmm. Were you put off by that? No. Because what we're doing is we're quite rightly just saying, here's what we've got. Here's how it can help you. Here's how to do it if you want it. Now let's go on with the show. Like, that, that, that's it. That's what you do. It's... If you want this, here's how I can help you. Here's how to do it. Cool. What's up with that? Don't get it. Trade secrets. Trade secrets. <laughs> nah, you're right. Nah, you're right. Um, so there you go. If you know that reference. Yeah. If you like that, um, like I say, don't forget to, uh, to do a members group. It's right there below. And uh, also, there's also a free guide down there as well if you want to get that. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I can't, is can't it? be specific. I think it's like eight mistakes on it, eight traits of successful online businesses. Oh, that's a, that's a video, isn't it? It's a video. Yeah. Better than this one as well. Yeah. In a nicer setting. So, um, Go check that out. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. If you haven't liked the video yet, like the video. Go share it with a mate. I know you won't. Do it anyway. There you go. Cheers. Catch you in a bit.